it certainly is. Right, I think we're good. Um, so yeah, I guess given where we are, uh, it's prudent to ask how the shop's been going. The shop has been um, the shop's been a learning curve for me. Yeah. Obviously, it's um, what I would say is that like starting a business in a global pandemic is not ideal. No. I wouldn't advise it. No. <laughs> but um, but it's given me it's given me something to really focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, yeah, the, the learning curve has been the, the kind of one of the most beautiful parts about it because mm -hmm. it's been a lot that I didn't know. So I've, I've, I found my, you know, I'm a business owner now, mm -hmm. which is which is it's not really enough to just love tattooing. Yeah. You kind of have to half understand Excel spreadsheets and yeah, yeah. <laughs> accounting and law and all this shit so it's um yeah it's been it's been a bit of a wild ride but all in all the shop itself is is functioning and it's and it's doing it's doing pretty well yeah it's doing really well it's a beautiful spot like Thank you. I know we spoke about before um the fact that it's so idyllic once you close those blinds and shut the door it's like you're not in London yeah um and getting tattooed where I was getting tattooed like it, it sucked obviously but the fact that it's such a relaxing spot with such relaxing music and a relaxing mm. environment and the people obviously yeah it made it uh, a we thoroughly enjoyable experience i'm glad to hear that because getting your knee tattooed by any account should not be a thoroughly enjoyable experience oh no that wasn't but but, uh, but yeah. it, it's nice to hear that you you know yeah your overall experience of the shop and getting tattooed here has been yeah one of peace and, and tranquility i, I think that I've been tattooing for 17 years and I've been around the industry that entire time and I've seen all of the changes and the fluctuations and you know getting tattooed is expensive, it's painful and it can be a really intimidating yeah. thing mm -hmm. and I wanted to just make sure that like we made our customers and our clients feel as comfortable as possible as soon as they walk through the door you know so you're offered a cup of tea or a drink whatever you want like if you need some space if you need to charge your phone like mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever you need like we're we're kind of here to advise and and support and just encourage and that just means that your whole tattoo experience is a lot easier it's just a lot it like, does help it really it, does help if you walk in like getting tattooed is an intimate thing mm -hmm. and um if you go somewhere and you don't feel like you don't feel welcome there straight away then that just that makes the whole thing quite traumatic mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't want anyone to come to my shop and have a traumatic experience I just want them to come and just really when they think about tattoos I, I want them to think of us yeah and, and, and it'd be really positive yeah you know? well it certainly was that like with the the uh, the offer of chocolate cake when I first came <laughs> in as well homemade chocolate cake oh it was the best she's, man she's fucking amazing yeah yeah but she's gonna be yeah that's Ossian she's already an amazing illustrator mm -hmm. um, she's one of the apprentices here and she's yeah she's a great tattooer gonna mm -hmm. be a great tattooer but was already a great cook so yeah <laughs> it's an amazing little baby properly yeah. nice as well like yeah yeah she's lovely dead county yeah like the uh opening the shop when you did you mm. you were planning it from be way before lockdown right yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did lockdown affect? I don't want to go straight into how did it affect you mentally, but mm -hmm. like, how? What did it do to you? Obviously, it stopped your plans to open the shop when you did. Yeah. So we signed. We were negotiating the lease for months, and we ended up signing the lease in like the first week of March, mm -hmm. which, as everyone knows, two weeks later yeah. we were in lockdown, mm -hmm. and that was just quite quite a rough time I think I took I took a pretty serious dip around yep. that time and for about a week I just went into myself was sleeping really badly mm -hmm. just playing video games all day literally all day yeah um, I think I got I got platinum camo for my for my submachine guns on Warzone. Yeah. And when I got that, I was like, oh, this, this, <laughs> this is. A, I didn't feel good about it. Those crystallising moments. I was like, oh no, that's a lot of hours. Yeah. Um, I was like, when you get that achievement, you play it for like a thousand hours, and you're thinking, I could have got a degree. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, and I'm still suck at this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, so I, 
when I did that and I got that, yeah, that platinum camo, I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, enough. And I st and I literally just packed my whole PlayStation up, mm -hmm. and I was like, I've got, I've been given this time, and I just looked at it as a massive gift. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is this is a huge gift. Yeah. Um, because I haven't been able to slow down for the past five years. I'm gonna have loads more time with my daughter over the summer now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the world is different and it's kind of scary, but I've just been gifted a ton of time at home in my studio. So I just painted. I just painted and painted and painted. I made like over 150 sheets of flash. Yeah. You know, something mental like over 500 ink roulette paintings. They were great. You know, thank they were you. super cool. Thank you. Yeah, that, it was a nice way to connect with fans and show them something new and paint and like loosen up and it also financially it, it helped massively it literally saved the show of course like financially obviously i'm sure it helped but did having that kind of outlet help uh, like yeah. up there yeah, oh absolutely it was so meditative but the whole process like doing that doing those paintings in front of people um and it being live and it being a, a, a shared experience was mm -hmm. it was awesome like you can't because you know, music. I have that connection with people, mm -hmm. and it's and it's a beautiful thing. And afterwards, you bump into a few people, and they, you know, want a picture and they want to chat to you. And, and summer is the busiest time for that. Summer mm -hmm. is like that feeds my soul, mm -hmm. you know, particularly to get through the winters. Cause yeah, I find the, I find winter quite hard. Yeah, and um, and so like, I needed to find a way to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Um, and. You know, it's really um, it's lovely for me to hear. Like I would, go, I would invite people on the live, and they'd be so surprised. And they'd be like, "I didn't think you'd pick me." <laughs> I'm like, well, surprise, like. Yeah. And then you know, I'd ask them like, what they wanted me to paint, and then I'd paint it while they, and then I'd ask them some questions, and they would tell me their stories, and mm -hmm. everyone was just so sweet. Everyone had such a nice, like something nice to say. And well, I, I think th th that helped us as well. Mm. Um, like I think coming back to that in a minute, the the sweet like the band attracts good people mm. there's a good vibe around the band and that attracts good people but just doing that it helped us like right. I can speak from experience oh Frank's going live quick now mm. like people would stop what they're doing it gave people other things to look forward to yeah, yeah, if sure. they didn't have a social life anymore or they couldn't go to work or what mm. have you it really did help us to dozens of people who had that oh, wow. it was awesome that's awesome but it was good again um, seeing people from around the world yeah, like totally. it was a girl in was she, was she in Switzerland. Yeah, she had a mountain out of her back sunset. window. On that. Yeah, yeah, wild. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, but it's like, what's the? I'm trying to think. Is the the future of the shop just continuing what you're doing? You think? Yeah. The, so the shop was always supposed to be my like. Um, it is the th tattooing is actually the thing that I know best probably mm -hmm. out of everything. I know I know music really really well, mm -hmm. but music is just such a variable. Yeah, you, you can you can do amazingly well, like and it can just fall apart like it, and for no real reason. It's, mm -hmm. it's all, music has always been a bit of a mystery to me, mm -hmm. um, but I love it and I'm good at it and I'll just keep playing and and I won't really worry about it. But mm -hmm. tattooing is something where like I know it and I can teach other people and I. I just really wanted to make a spot like I've been in loads of tattoo shops some of them I've loved some of them I've not loved and I, I just I just knew always that like it would be remiss of me to not have my own shop one day mm -hmm. that would be silly yeah, you know totally and so when this one came up last year um, I came and saw the space and I could see I had a vision for it you know mm -hmm. and we're there we've achieved it you know? yeah and again like H half achieved it I'm getting there, man. Yeah. It's super well, cool. yeah. The real, the big vision is is the basement. Like yeah. That, that's like, there's, we've got a basement. You can't stand up down there. I really want to dig it out and have another floor downstairs. Yeah. That that was my big goal because then I'd have, like, I'd soundproof the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We'd have a whole setup down there, and rattlesnakes could just come and play whenever they want. Mm -hmm. And then I've got everything I need in London. Yeah. And I don't have to worry ever again. I know? like that. Um, that's that's my dream dream. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. How achievable do you think that is? I'm gonna do I mean a obviously course, it's I'm achievable. Gonna, yeah, I'll do a core sample of the floor and see what's beneath the concrete. Mm -hmm. If it's just hectic down there, I probably won't bother and I'll just have like... I, I've, I've been toying with a few ideas, right? 
because it, it's like I'm five seven, mm -hmm. and I can stand up in between the beams. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, so it's it's not a big space. But when you're sitting, mm -hmm. it's it's okay. Yeah, yeah, there's room and it's bright down there and it's dry and it's not damp and it doesn't smell. So like, I was like, okay, I can clear it all out, and we can just sit down there. And we can have big tables mm -hmm. and we can just play. Fucking Dungeons and Dragons yep. or Warhammer or play Magic the Gathering in the basement mm -hmm. and it'll be like the game dungeon you yep. know so that was one option and then the other option was I get my friends down here for a weekend we just build some really weird shapes out of two before board it all up mm -hmm. and we have a climbing wall yep. an actual cave you know so you mm -hmm. just climb over the ceiling yeah, yeah. like so those are the two options if we can't dig down if we can dig down I'll dig it out and we'll make we'll, we'll put like that'll be Rattlesnake's HQ we'll have our own permanent room that we can record in and write in forever for the next 15 years and that that's the dream because if I can give that back to the band then I've done something pretty major you know that's awesome yeah that's the hope yeah, yeah. you you speak about uh, rattlesnakes for the next 15 years mm. it's a terribly Parkinson type question yeah. but like you would you did gallows I think the six years you with gallows ish yeah um yeah, about yeah, two yeah. thousand five ish to eleven, yeah. and then I think it was three with Pure Love. If that, um, is there an upper end on, on rattlesnakes? No fucking way, man. No. Nah. nah, me and Dino just we just get each other. Do you There's think no, that's no, why it's endured as much as it has? Yeah, and like, I have an ego on me, obviously. I'm a fucking rock star, you know. You can't, you can't be a rock star if you don't have a bit of an ego. Nah. Dino has an ego about him in different ways, but. Mm -hmm. the we don't bring our egos to each other. Like no. When we talk, it's adult to adult. Mm -hmm. He's one of the few adult to adult relationships I have in my life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, genuinely. And um, so when we talk, I can talk to him calmly. We can we can argue and mm -hmm. we can disagree and we still like, we just put it down. Um, there's no upper limit on rattlesnakes. We, we, you know, last year we got into it we cut, carved out some time to write. We wrote a whole album of mm. music for an, for an entirely different band. Wow. Yeah. Just, just, it just fell out of us. It just, and it's crazy. It's fucking nuts. Why would it be for a different band? Sorry. Because it's it, it definitely can't be for Rattlesnakes. No. It's not. No. If we put, if we put it out as Rattlesnakes, our fans would just be like, "What the fuck are you doing? Like, okay. what is this? It's not like any. It's completely like alt pop, like." Mm -hmm. uh, genre bending like fucking trip hop almost. I'm here for that. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best it's it's definitely some of the best songs I've ever written and he he as well. And so we're working on that now to try and find a a space for that in the world. Mm -hmm. Um and it will come out one day. It's mm -hmm. it's cool as fuck. Awesome. Like, it's really cool. Um but it's just not rattlesnakes and like you know, when you've got a rock band that is working and mm -hmm. it's moving, it, that's the kind of thing you've got to nurture that. You can't, well, yeah. you can't just make big, bold swings because the whole world can just say no and mm -hmm. leave you behind. So. Yeah. Plus, we're working on album four anyway, so. Yeah? Yeah. Bad boy. <laughs> I, can you tell me anything about that? It's, um. So it's like. I think in every one of our albums we've we've written like there's been one or two songs that have had the sound of the band that we want to be mm -hmm. if that makes sense and That's like interesting. Our, each of our albums we've made have been so eclectic mm -hmm. that it's actually been it's actually kind of done a disservice to us in the great in the grander scheme of things like okay. I mean they've been they've been too wide too varied and so not everyone can like People can listen to the album if they're a fan of the band. They'll appreciate. They'll understand where we're coming from. But to your everyday listener who just might pick that up, it's a lot to get your head around. Yeah, okay. And you. there's no, there's never been a focused sound, mm -hmm. you know, for Rattlesnake. Yeah, yeah. It's just been like kind of fluid, and we've been exploring. Mm -hmm. You think about all those bands. Like I say it all the time, but Elton John, he didn't have a hit to his third album. Yeah. You know, no, to his fourth album. He, he made three albums, then he made then he made four flat. You, uh, bands aren't given the time to develop anymore. They're, mm -hmm. they're not given the time to explore, to find out who they are. Mm -hmm. When you get to album four, like the pressure is off. You're relaxed. Yep. You're trying to understand like who you are, who you want to be, what you want to write. Bollocks! Just cracked my fucking screen.
screen. Like your actual screen you've cracked? Yeah. Not a protector? I mean, that's just me though. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well. Oh, I'm um, sorry, mate. No, don't be. It's my fault. Um, but I agree with that. I agree with that. Like, um, we're speaking there about idols. Mm. The sound from their first couple of albums, Brutalism was uh, more them, but the one before that, mm. it was totally different. Mm. And now they've emerged as this fucking powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you say there's a couple of songs in each album that define the, the sound of the band you want to be. Mm. Which songs would those be? Mm. I think like... I know it's a tricky thing to kind of pigeonhole a, a band, but no, it, it, it's not because that and that's the problem. Is we've we've everyone's tried to pigeonhole us to make because it's because they people want things easy. They want to understand it. Does know? it get tiresome when people reference? Is it going to sound more like Blossom? They uh, no, but that's what I mean. They, yeah. they 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 want you know, and in in a way, it does. The new album is like it's aggressive, mm -hmm. but like. It's aggressive in a way where it's not like Blossom was explosive, yeah, wildly so. Mm -hmm. It was it was flailing fucking. It was literally like you chucked a bunch of fucking fireworks in an old people's home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was nuts. It was just like everyone's gonna get hurt. Like mm -hmm. we, you know, there was no focus to it. Mm -hmm. And then with this, it's like um, right. with this time, it's it, it, you know, with Modern Ruin, it was it was much more focused but about such a wide thing mm -hmm. about the whole world and how that was falling apart and, mm -hmm. and and how that mirrors what was going on in my personal life and then with End of Suffering the, the, the sound got much wider yeah. really really vast really expansive we gave loads of room mm -hmm. for everything and yet that was about like the most focused situation okay. which is just like me dealing with my fucking like watching it like the breakdown of my life and, and all the decisions I was making you know yeah and it's I want to talk about the, your music com is clearly autobiographical yeah it's yeah. you wear your heart on your sleeve in a lot of senses fully Did, is it hard going back to playing old songs from parts of your life that maybe you don't want to revisit again not at all because the therapy for me happens in the writing of the song okay and then the recording of it so once it's recorded then I spend like a good month two months listening to it before anyone's heard it okay you know and that's where I make my peace with the song mm -hmm. and then as soon as it's out in the world it don't belong to me anymore it might might have been about an experience in my life but I've already had so many months listening to it mm -hmm. really studying it making sure that I'm happy with, with what I'm saying and how it's being delivered mm -hmm. and then um, and then once it's out people are gonna they're going to take it and appreciate it in, in whatever way they want mm -hmm. and then it belongs to them it's their song yeah and it will mean different things to them than it does to me you know yeah for sure and that's not for me to like i'm not here to sort of judge anyone or say no no it doesn't the song doesn't mean that if the song means something completely different to you than me then that's a beautiful thing yeah music art it's about what we what we're looking for mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like the tarot you you, you pull out all those cards and, yeah. you, and you find what you need for sure, yeah. It, you know that you you spoke in a uh, on stage about I think it was Newcastle where you, you said songs like um, Juggernaut. Mm. They, they you didn't say hold you back. You, you, the, the label kind of sticks around. Mm. I think you said the, they can be a noose at times. Yeah. It, what was it about? I don't know if it was specifically Juggernaut, but what was it about that kind of thing that you felt was kind of holding you back? Or I, I think I think that I don't think it's holding me back, but I think that like. We made that album without any real thought. We just mm -hmm. let the songs fall out of us. And um, when we put it out in the world, it was very clear that that is what the world had been waiting for. Mm -hmm. We were like, fucking hell, this is, this is what we wanted from you. And while that was a beautiful thing, if I didn't have to like keep doing that music mm -hmm. just to keep people on side, like, I'm going to like die miserable. Because you know? mm -hmm. I've never written music for other people. I've always no. been... So every album that we've made is the, is the album that I've wanted to make. Mm -hmm. um, the difference now is that we're taking time, more time, to mm -hmm. write and to record and to like disassemble the songs, mm -hmm. constantly reconstruct them. 
re really like try and make the best music we've ever written. Yeah. Um, and so like when we when I say like yeah we've got the album four is aggressive, it's aggressive in a really celebratory way. Awesome. Like it's it, it, it's um at one point we were gonna call it Demon Slayer. Okay. Because um a lot of the songs are about like about your demons mm -hmm. but about taking it instead of like sitting in my misery and singing about how fucking sad I'm about it it's about well here's a, like I'm a fucking sword mm -hmm. like, and I'm gonna go and slay those fucking things well that's what I was gonna come on to like mm. um, there's a lot of songs especially th songs like Anxiety mm. um, that really deal with it head on yeah. um, and that's awesome people need to hear that and I think having someone like you especially talking about it not only is it does it resonate it gets people talking as well but yeah sure. songs like juggernaut um were very important for for me like i've never struggled opening up mm. what i struggled with was the ego side of it mm. like i've always kind of accepted this beta male role okay um and songs like juggernaut were like is that fucking right is it yeah like you can be that yeah. and just because you you want to say yeah i'm not going to have that kind of shit doesn't mean you're a douchebag or an asshole it no just way. means you're you're fighting for what you're worth. I think Juggernaut was that for me. Yeah, a hundred percent. Good, that's amazing. I'm but, glad to hear that, man. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it's a powerful song. But again, I, I guess it would lead to a lot of those. Uh, as soon as you hear that first chord, all the big lads run to the pit, mm. and everyone just gets fucking pushed to the side. Quite often, yeah. It, it, it is definitely like. Yeah, I've, I've seen some absolute carnage. Just, mm -hmm. from, just from him playing that chord really even sometimes he just plays it really slowly yeah and then you watch like a whole just turn it turns and it looks like supernatural yeah it's, just, it's like you're watching a storm mm -hmm. it's fucking beautiful yeah the spectacle like I said we, uh, when we were tattooing the, the Hellfest show yeah. when you got people to run around the back of the the <laughs> tower the sound tower uh, you did it at download as well. You yeah. had me fucking exhausted. <laughs> I was done in. I've, 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 the amount of times I've jumped in the pit and had a, gone for a run, it's just like it's <laughs> not, not a vibe. Like doing like a fucking 400 meter sprint in the middle of a gig is not something I would tell anyone to do. Yeah, I'm not a medium distance runner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like speaking of download as well, again, it's to stroking your ego a bit. You, you made a bunch of us cry our fucking eyes out. Oh, mate. Um, you held uh, the phone up yeah. the crowd and you, you were speaking to your daughter Mercy no one's ever going to hurt you because these these people are going to look after you and the whole crowd fucking raw it was uh, yeah hit me right in the feels yeah but yeah, I think I that's um, what separates your band from other similar bands like it's not just vitriol do you that, know what I mean it's not just aggression that's been the hard, hardest part for me is that like not it is understanding that side of it because mm -hmm. it's easy for me to like I, I like I have a quite a good relationship with rage mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I've nurtured it mm -hmm. I, 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 I can switch it on and off as I want like mm -hmm. and I use it for work mostly um, but like it's been about understanding all the other aspects that life isn't just about a singular emotion and mm -hmm. yeah rage is important anger is a gift you know yeah. I've said that like it's, it's it's how you use it, and uh, we're watching that in a minute developing the world. You know, we're seeing how people are using anger as a gift. Yeah. You know, and how when it's focused, it mm -hmm. can be really powerful, and when it's not focused, it's incredibly destructive. You know. Yeah. Like again, it again linking those two things. You spoke to to Mercy there. Um, and you speak about the world now. What? Is there anything that you're kind of nervous about her growing up and being oh, part every, of? Everything. Like, what would you like? To, it's a fucking. What would you like to see the change in the world? Like, mm. are you hopeful for the the state of the world that she's going to inherit? Like, what can we do no, in our I'm, generation? I'm, I'm, no, I'm really nervous about that. It's, it, I think it's even too too far gone. What we can do, what people don't think about, is like, is everyone's trying to like, everyone's clawing. And they and they're not realizing that there's so many people, that there's so many generations above them that have the power. Mm -hmm. And unless we just take it from them, mm -hmm. like they're never going to give it to us. Mm -hmm. um, so what 
I've been trying to do is just talk to my daughter, mm -hmm. teach her, right? Yeah. She, you know, she's a good 30 years younger than me. Like, teach her so that her generation, she goes into her class and she challenges her friends and, and thinks about things differently and always, mm -hmm. you know? We should be teaching our kids to understand these things. And we never, you never do that as a child. You just, you're just cruising about. You're not bothered by politics. You don't think about the world. It's that you don't let it affect you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to encourage her to like look and ask questions and mm -hmm. think really, really think rather than just be told. <laughs> um, so it's it's uh, yeah it's uh, for her I think like I'm s I'm n really nervous about the world that she's going to inherit. Yeah, like just really really nervous about that. It's scary. Uh, yeah, I can understand. Like I said, I don't have kids, but it's like yeah, I've got nieces and things, and it's. It is not. Uh, it is a, a nerve-wracking thing, I guess. It is. It's ter It's it's fucking terrifying, man. Yeah. Because it, it, there's nothing like. I don't know. It's it's fucking scary. I've often thought one of the best forms of revolution is just to opt out of that system. Like there's certain things we can't opt out of. You need to make money. You need to pay your taxes. Yeah. Unless you live completely off the grid, you can't be totally absent from the system. But Absolutely. The, yeah. yeah. I think there's certain things we might be able to. Yeah, I think I think with like trying to go off the grid and stuff, it's a really interesting concept. But then, like, it's like you were saying earlier, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. Like, mm -hmm. for me, that starts like way younger. Mm -hmm. if you can, if you can build, if you can be there, our role now. We've hey, how you doing? You're right. Hi. No, it's okay. How's it going? Hey, how you doing? Yes. Nice to, yeah. nice nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Oh, nice to meet you. How, how are you? How are you? So sorry. That's okay. Right. Um, yeah, it's open, yeah. Um, with with the with our generation, we've missed our shot. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, for sure. If you imagine the powerhouse of like governments, societies, world powers, one percenters, all that, like as the Goliath, mm -hmm. you know, and then like each generation is the David, mm -hmm. and like you can take it down with a well aimed shot. Yeah. Our generation has missed their shot. I think the generation beneath us, even a couple of generations beneath us, mm -hmm. they've missed their shots. Mm -hmm. Like it's gonna be like our children's children that mm -hmm. have the actual shot at mm -hmm. taking down that system, dismantling mm -hmm. it. And that comes from education. Yeah, totally agree, yeah. But that the problem with that is that like you look at the government now absolutely destabilizing like all all the infrastructures mm -hmm. in our lives like selling off the NHS yeah selling off the education system sell, selling off the postal service everything mm -hmm. like sell it all off it's just about money and greed and yeah. like and that is just to go back to the, the higher the, the higher powers of the one percenters of the world the billionaires the, the Jeff Bezos is now you know he has the potential to be the world's first trillionaire yeah you can't comprehend how much money that is. No. None of us can. Our brains don't work like that. Mm -hmm. We can't actually ever understand how much money that is. Yeah. It's scary, isn't it? It's it's unnecessary as well. Yeah. Like I'm sure I read somewhere there's, there's some relationship whereby if you've earned something, I don't know, hundred million, it's impossible for you to. Sp that after that point, it might even be ten million. Mm. It doesn't change your quality of life anymore. It, it your quality of life remains exactly the same. So the rest of it's just an addiction. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a scary thing. Yeah, it is. And, uh, it's fucking terrifying. Yeah, I really hope it changes. I really, really hope it changes. Yeah. I'm quite pessimistic at times with respect to that, but then again, I'm quite hopeful. Like it, mm. it depends. It depends what news is out there. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a fucking, it's a gnarly, gnarly world. Like all, oh, you know, I, I've got, I've got this shop, and that's like, you know, when the lease is up on this place, I'm going to be 50 years old. Yeah, know, like I'll be fifty, mm -hmm. and and my daughter will be like twenty. Mm -hmm. you know? So I will be hopefully renegotiating another long lease with these with these to 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 give that shop to my daughter, you mm -hmm. know, so that she can have it for for her her life if she wants it. Yeah, she doesn't. Then, then so what? I will support her whatever she wants to do. But you know, this this shop is going to be that's my legacy. So that's. You talk about like what kind of world you want your, your, your kids to inherit. We can only control the bit that we can control. Yep. So you come in here, you get a beautiful tattoo, 
mm -hmm. in a really nice environment where everyone's really like respectful yep. and calm mm -hmm. and welcoming to you and treats you with love and kindness and compassion because mm -hmm. you're another because you're a human yep. and that's what you deserve that's what that's this is what I can control I totally agree yeah you know this is mm -hmm. what I can give my daughter and I, and I can I can create this little world for her and she can she can I can raise her in that and uh and so, like, yeah, she's going to inherit the rest of the fucking world. Mm -hmm. But that's not, man, if I could control that, I would. <laughs> yeah. I can't. So what I can control, I will make out of out of peace and out of love now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not to say that I don't think, like, anger is important. Because it is. Um, but I'm just definitely, I'm also respecting it in a way where I never have before. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's... um. It's a hard thing to comprehend, mm. like changing the, the the way the world works. Yeah, uh, the people are often oh, they say that's oh, just the way it is, mm. and but without any notion of how to change it. And they say the the insidious thing is people tend to agree the media is the enemy, mm. but then they don't change their consumption habits of the media. It's exactly like if the media is the enemy, don't listen to the media yeah don't turn don't like turn notifications off for the news mm -hmm. select news that is impartial mm -hmm. like or like at least cross-reference across very like widely varying yeah, news yeah. sources if you just go to the bbc you're going to get fed like exactly what the bbc wants to give you mm -hmm. same if you go to the guardian yeah same if you go to al jazeera you're going to mm -hmm. get what they want to give you i always say try and take an average mm. it, it, there's a lot of, I, I think people struggle to yeah, they don't want to or they struggle to, they've never been taught to mm. read about the other side of the argument as well. Yeah. So, yeah. It, just going back to the content of one of your songs mm. about terrorism, Yeah. people would never think to actually read the Quran. No. Do you know what I mean? They'd never think to actually read the thing. They just, yeah. oh, that's that's the guy, he's the enemy. Yeah. It's a, it's it, a scary it's, it's thing. It's really difficult for me because what 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 the media does is it is it uh, demonizes really good at demonizing mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it dissociates and it depersonalizes mm -hmm. and it demonizes and um and you and then you see like terrorists or you see victims of terrorists and you never sort of think like that person has a sixth birthday party yeah do you know what i mean it i wonder what they did when they were eight years old yeah I wonder what they did when they were 11 mm -hmm. or 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 uh, and then here they are at 17 or 23 or 28 or 45 mm -hmm. and their life has led them to this path where mm -hmm. at some point and I, I don't think that took years mm -hmm. I think I think maybe it took a year or six months yeah where something went bad and they got and they needed something in their life and they turned to it and and it made sense to them to I don't know, attack other people and try and leave their mark or like mm -hmm. work towards whatever goal they're going to, but we're all unfortunately human beings. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's what people like people forget that shit. Like terrorists are aren't like monsters. They're they're human beings. Mm -hmm. They've just been they've just been sold like a very different set of events. And also like you look at it you look at like the like the migrant crisis mm -hmm. these people are not migrants no. they're fucking refugees yeah and they turn up on your shore and you're sitting there saying like they're illegal immigrants like mm -hmm. where the fuck are they supposed to go mm -hmm. because you because we the british have just been integral in bombing their entire fucking country yeah you know, and these aren't people like you. Look at the pe people coming in on boats. They're not fucking. They're not opportunists. They're not criminals. They're literally their teachers, their doctors, yeah. their office workers. Yeah. Their, their labourers. They're skilled mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, and their families. Of course, yeah. And they're just trying to get to safety. I think a lot of um, a lot of that is. A lot of the perception of that is symptomatic of the people that judge people based upon their worst elements mm -hmm. so I'd never say there might be some chances in there mm. but the proportions would be so low mm. relative to the people that just want to escape death and destruction and tragedy absolutely like it again it's looking at 
newspapers that they'll be oh you know brown family comes over mm. gets given a free mansion and oh. there's uproar it's like mm. did they really get given a free mansion no i mean they've been their, their entire lives were probably taken away from them mm -hmm. that's why they're here like and that would have been on like orders from the west like it, it's it's crazy to me yeah i agree yeah. it's very mm -hmm. sad um yeah i think but i'm very hopeful about change mm. uh i don't know how long it will take it's it's i don't think we'll see it in our lifetime like all things is it's all a constant work in progress isn't it mm -hmm. everything yeah that's what they, they say in yoga practice makes progress yeah you know rather than practice makes perfect because it doesn't is it? what is perfect mm -hmm. no one knows and, and it's different to the subjective it's different to everybody so for me yeah it's a constant work in progress and you just gotta like I, I mean you just have to work yeah you have to work at it so is that the same for everything you do absolutely yeah yeah yeah, for me, like, you know, take take my tattooing for example. Like, I, I I drew a bunch of sheets of flash at the beginning of the lockdown, actual tattoo flash, and I was loving it. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point where I was like, oh, this is this is quite a lot of work. I've done I've done like twenty sheets or something. Mm -hmm. I need to like loosen up. So I so then I was like painting them in watercolor with no outlines, and I loved it. I used to paint like that all the time. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, these these are great. They'd make great tattoos, yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to just sketch. I'm going to just fucking get a black pencil and just fucking draw the roughest, crudest tattoos mm -hmm. I can do. No sketching, just bam, just mm -hmm. line, it, like pencil to paper and whatever is there, that's the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And then I was using them, then I was using those sketches as underlays to, to then paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was like as direct as it could be. Mm -hmm. There was no like sketching for half an hour and yeah. working out and tweaking the design. It was just like pencil to paper paint to paper done mm -hmm. and now I'm like I'm taking those watercolor paintings and I'm outlining them I'm yeah. adding shading I'm turning them into tattoos yeah yeah and they look really beautiful and they mm -hmm. look like as they make sense as tattoos now yeah people weren't getting it they, I was like I was like I can make this into a tattoo for you and they're like but will it look like this like, <laughs> well, no but it, you know so and that's and that's a prime example of like imagination mm -hmm. you know you can't expect people to see things the way you see it because oh. they've got an entirely different set of circumstances mm -hmm. but what I can do is take that entire process and understand that the whole thing was a work in progress mm -hmm. yeah and all the way through I started with one thing and all the way through I've come to the end and I'm finishing with a product that looks similar to mm -hmm. how I started I've, I've had this entire process of work throughout it yeah. and now the whole function is way quicker way better way mm. more fun for me yeah. and the work is better like mm -hmm. it, it's definitely I'm now drawing the best tattoos I've ever drawn in my life mm -hmm. and and that is falling into my work and it's just making me a load happier it's my, my customers are happier yeah. everyone's getting quicker tattoos they're getting better tattoos they're getting more for their money mm -hmm. um, it's inspiring other people in the shop they're inspiring me so it's just and that's all been you know from, from, from the process I like that I like that yeah. I, I kind of look at life that way Yeah. Um, if I'm lucky enough to get a, a little bit of time at the end to reflect mm. I'm never ever I've got a pretty good job I'm never gonna think, wow, that car was lovely. Mm. Wow, that house. It'll be the things I did, the things I saw. Mm. Um, again, it's it's weird to have measures of success on life, but if there were two, it'd be like the two I always think of: were the good of the people around me, and did I have fun? Mm. Aside from that, nothing else matters. Like, I'd, it would be good to make a mark in the world and leave a bit of a legacy. Mm. Um, but I think your legacy can be what you want it to be absolutely like my family my legacy will resonate with them the people I touch the people I see totally. I don't want a, a banner or a, a blimp or anything like that but mm. yeah it's a it's a funny thing this life thing <laughs> and that's a fucking stupid thing to say it's a broad thing to say but no but you're, you're right it is. I um, say all the time I'm like man it's weird as fuck <laughs> yeah like living is crazy when you assess things with some objectivity and stand back and think what is going on? Mm. What is going on? It's uh, 
some of the things we have to say on a daily basis of again I'm not getting into politics but people oh yeah wear the masks you've got to wear it in here then they'll get clocked themselves not wearing a mask oh yeah you never had to in the first place mm. like that's a legitimate thing yeah it's they're the people running the country mate it's so scary we dude we don't have enough time to go into that <laughs> to them fuckers it's, yeah it's, it's terrifying that is scary yeah it's well, like when we were talking about education and that's the important part mm -hmm. you know and they're just completely defunding it and um breaking it down and just making it harder for people to educate mm -hmm. um, and then they wonder why they've got like the, the, the kind of young adults that they have mm -hmm. because they're, they're, they're not teaching them they're not educating them they're not they're making it so difficult for people to mm -hmm. go to university and explore life and it's, it's really sad yes it's very very sad um, shifting for a sec mm. one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, we were speaking when we were getting tattooed about um, the re-emergence of live music hopefully when it comes back next year whenever yeah, yeah. is it tricky for you to, like, do you get a, a, a detriment from if you tour so hard and you're away from home does it start to affect you and if so like how do you balance that yeah it's, it's, it's obviously it's cathartic certainly not, it's obviously it's cathartic and it's therapeutic being on stage and yeah and it's letting it out that, that that's like it's, yeah, performance has always been like an integral part of my life, my living. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's fucking difficult being being away from from family and friends and my daughter mm -hmm. is, is really really hard work. Mm -hmm. like, it puts a strain on all your relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I'm certain it will put a strain on my work relationship here. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's always been a part of my life. It's who I am, mm -hmm. and there are sacrifices that we all have to make. Um, and that's just one of them that I make, you know, in order to go. Because look, yeah, I could stay put and be around for my family and my friends more, and then they would get more out of me. But what would I get out of them? You yeah, know okay, what I mean, for sure. Because, yeah. because they wouldn't. My family and my friends, the ones that really know me and love me, they would never ask me to do that oh, because they yeah. understand how important music is to me, mm -hmm. and they understand how important my music is to other people mm -hmm. and so like I kind of have a responsibility to go and do that for other people mm -hmm. that, that's my gift well I was going to ask about that but I didn't want to be so blunt like mm. do you feel a, a debt of responsibility to you're a p paternal guy you're a caring guy you wear your heart and your sleeve do you feel responsible for the people that you perform to and not just about delivering a good show yeah but like do you feel a bit of a, a nurturing responsibility over those people yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I care about my fans a lot because I feel that they care about me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's why we our gigs are supposed to be a safe space. We call out the violent, mm -hmm. you know, misogynists, homophobes, racists. Mm -hmm. We won't have them. Nope. If, if we if that if that happens and we see it, we remove them mm -hmm. like as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, I, I feel an enormous responsibility towards our fans. It, it's it's not it's not my responsibility. Not get you, but I feel it. Well, like, yeah, and uh, but I have to check. I do have to check myself quite often because it's like it can be a lot. Like it, for me, people definitely they they lean on me a lot. Like mm -hmm. I'll get people coming for a tattoo, and it's like within minutes. I understand why they're there because they've, they've told me yeah. the backstory as to how it's led to this point and why they want these lyrics or this tattoo and what it means to get tattooed by me and that's a beautiful thing and that, that's part of my responsibility as well is to listen and to have compassion mm -hmm. and to never tire and, and because every person is new and I owe that to them yeah. like if I've, if I've written a song or played a show that has had a, a, an enormous impact on them it's it's my responsibility to listen when they want to talk about it and hear it and and, mm -hmm. and, and it, it can be a lot sometimes it of course be, it yeah it can be quite a lot like and, and I've heard some like pretty traumatic stories mm -hmm. um, but it's what I've learned more recently like in the past sort of two three years is that that's not my weight to carry well, no you know yeah it's, it, and often like they're giving it to me. And I can hold my hands out, but but then it's not for me to take it from them I and yeah, take that with for me. Sure. It's for both of us. It's, it's really for me to hold 
while they set it on fire and then we just throw it up in the air. That's like, a beautiful way know? to put it, yeah. That's what we should be doing and that's what we always that's what happens when you have an adult to adult relationship with someone. Mm -hmm. You treat each other with respect. You don't you don't burden each other with stuff. You're not taking on each other's problems. You're you're taking the sh you're, you're taking the problem. You're making you're sharing it, mm -hmm. which makes it lighter. It makes it known to the world. Yeah. And then you're working out a solution. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, the solution is just to share and yeah. talk and communicate. And then that's not resting on anyone's on any one single person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know? Did you um did you have that kind of thing in a band growing up? Like obviously you're more accessible than a lot of musicians, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you? Even if people don't meet you and don't get to spend time with you, mm. your your music and your lyrics and you as a person help people. It's a nurturing kind of comforting thing. Yeah. Did you did you have that kind of comfort blanket in music when you were a kid? Like, was there any one artist or band that you could like, not even escape into, but you saw as like everything's gonna be okay because that person's there. Hmm. Never. No, I didn't. No. I never. I never had like a. It's gonna be okay because that person exists. I like. I love Deftones. Mm -hmm. Fuck you know. I love that band. Mm -hmm. Um. But I didn't. And I met. I met Chino. I met Abe. You know. Mm -hmm. But I never like. I was never the kind of person that was like so obsessed with someone mm -hmm. that like I thought life was okay just because that person was around okay. right? but I, I it was it was music as a whole mm -hmm. there was a supporting network for me mm -hmm. I would just put on record after record after record and get lost in music mm -hmm. and that it was hearing people hearing songs that resonated with me because and made me feel not alone in the world mm -hmm. it didn't matter who'd written it no, okay. I was like, wow, that's mm -hmm. someone out there that feels the same way I do. Do you feel the, again, not the responsibility, but do you recognise that what the Deftones were to you, you are to somebody else? Yeah, I do. It took a long time. Mm -hmm. took a long time. It's, it's weird as fuck. Cause I'm like, sure it is. One minute you're in the crowd, like, at Kentish Town Forum watching Deftones play, mm -hmm. and the next minute you're in fucking, you're in Kentish Town Forum and you've sold it out and you're playing it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whoa. Is it weird your idols becoming your peers? I know it's a binary way to put it. It's a stupid way to put it, but no, no, it, it, yeah, it's bizarre. It's yeah, bizarre as fuck. Because, because also then you, you, you like a lot of risk there. Yeah, a lot of risk. Oh, meeting your heroes. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Absolutely, absolutely. Because not all of them get it right. Yeah, you know, and and also you can meet that person on a bad day. Mm -hmm. Every everyone's human. We all have good days, bad days. Yeah. And if you meet that person on a bad day. It's not. That's a lot of energy that they've got to muster to mm -hmm. to just be polite to you, mm -hmm. and no one knows what anyone else has got going on in their life. You mm -hmm. know, I'm like I try and be really respectful to everyone that meets me and really thankful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't always get it right. I, I I do I do really really try to, mm -hmm. um, but also. I'm a human being, and I and there's certain times where like it crosses a line for me, you know. Of course, yeah. Like if I'm with my daughter, if you see me out with my daughter, just just don't just don't come to me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just don't like. Just give me that space. I don't mm -hmm. get to see my daughter enough. Like, I don't want to have to like. I can't let go of her hand. No. When if we're if we're around, mm -hmm. I can, but I don't want to. Well, yeah. And. I'm not going to let her be in a picture with you because mm -hmm. I don't really even put pictures of her on the internet anymore. No. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be more careful about it and give her some an anonymity. So, mm -hmm. you know, and people are usually pretty respectful from that. Sometimes not, and then, but more importantly, like if you ask, just respect my boundaries. If I say no, just uh, it's For not sure. me being an asshole. There will be a reason because if if I'm because fuck nine nine. 99 times out of 100 mm -hmm. I'll be I'll give you that photo oh well, yeah and I'll chill and we'll chat and mm -hmm. it'll be kind but like every now and again there'll be a reason why I can't yeah so yeah what's uh again total shift what Mercy listening to is she developing her own taste yet yeah she she's when we're in the house she's like daddy play Solange <laughs> and I'm like okay cool <laughs> well, Beyonce's then, sister yeah, yeah, yeah oh nice she loves it yeah yeah she loves Solange 
and then um, she'll just sit there and sing and laugh. Um, <laughs> and then when we get in the car, she's like, Daddy, play Tyrant is a King. And I'm like, what the fuck? Nice, man. From Solange to Tyrant is a King. Yeah. And then, and then like, we've got a few, like, like so she hears the music before anyone else, obviously. Mm-hmm. She, well, yeah. She hears the albums before anyone gets to hear them, which is pretty fucked up. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah it's awesome, but she doesn't. I don't think she appre- Well, I know she doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> Bro, I had to serenade that girl while she's in the bath, and she's like, shh. I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you know how many people would love to get sung to by me in the bath? And you're yeah. just like, shh. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. She's, she's, but yeah, she. But then, then every now and again, we'll get a remix of one of our songs, and I'll put it on, and she's like, mm-hmm. Play Tyrant is a King, and I start playing the work. And she's like, No, no, play the good one. The good one? Yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> uh, brutal kiddo. <laughs> what are you listening to at the minute? I'm I know that's the a, minute. again a massive question, but. Um, I go through phases, but like, I, this is the first month of my life I've actually started listening to podcasts. Yeah. So I'm listening to a lot of like Warhammer 40,000 battle reports. Yeah, which yeah. Which is hilarious. Um, this podcast called Chill Team. Listen mm-hmm. to that. Um, I tattooed a woman not long ago who runs the Macabre London podcast. I've just been listening to that. It's really interesting. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then uh, and then music wise, a lot of Mac Miller, mm-hmm. a lot of Michael Kilinuka. Have you seen Mac Miller's Tiny Desk session? No, I oh, haven't. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, cool. Real I'll, beautiful. I'll check that out. But yeah, just swimming. I listen to that album all yeah. the time. I listen to that album at least once a week. Mm-hmm. I love it, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like. As far as new music goes, like I'm just jamming a lot of idols lately. Yeah. I'm having that. Kra- Krangbin. There's this okay. band called Krangbin. It's like K H R U A N G B I N. Yeah. They they man. They've just written some beautiful music. Yeah. Just, uh, fucking yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. You need like a glass of wine and a spliff and just like boom. Yeah. And just be away in a slightly fucking totally different world. I felt that um, about um the new Tom Mish album. Oh, mate, it's so good. It's a vibe and a half. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Again, his Tiny Death session was uh, was something to behold. Oh, I'll, I'll check that out. Beautiful. Our, our guitar tech, Elliot Russell, he, he works with Tom mm-hmm. quite a bit. And so, like, yeah, we're always... And we've all been fans of Tom Mish for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's so young. Mate. For as prolific as he's been, he's so young. It's hectic, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It scares me. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, I was... I was a latecomer to Mac Miller, mm. a real latecomer. I, I, again, Tiny Desk Sessions, my girl are obsessed with him. Mm. And uh, we watched that, and it wasn't until after he passed that I realised just how fucking good he was. He's incredibly Ridiculously yeah, good. It's really sad. Yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate to think the way it happened, that mm. someone would not want to be there anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That is life, though. It is. If, I mean, I, I don't want to bring it down. Have you ever felt like that? I have. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the world knows that about me as well. But um, yeah, like, I, I was. In, it was funny because like I got really, really close to myself, mm-hmm. and then I stepped down. But even after that, I still had like I still had all the the the, the haze of all of those problems. Mm-hmm. And then I got hit by a car, and that gave me like the. Mm, at most clarity I've ever had in my life okay. that I wanted to live. Wow. Which was crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, How long ago was that? It's uh, coming up to a year now. Okay. Uh, might have even, yeah, it might have been a year actually. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty hectic. Yeah. Very it's hectic. It's, um, I've had a few instances of that. Mm. And again, it's not until something shows you how fleeting life is. Yeah, man. Um, scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've been there before, and I've wanted to not be here anymore. Mm. And there's a couple of times that, again, tried. I'm not going to, but tried. Mm. And then something will happen. You think, fuck, life's beautiful. Like, yeah, it is, man. it's not. It's not even easy to see it sometimes. Sometimes the desperation so much that you just you can't see that. But then the hair settles, um, and you realise that it's a gift. It's a proper gift, and it not really in a religious is. way, but like, it really is a gift. Mm. It's so fleeting and temporary. Well, all of this is borrowed. It certainly is, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just weird, weird. We don't own any of this. No. And uh, one day we won't be here anymore, and mm-hmm. it won't matter to us. So, yep. you may as well fucking make it count while you're here, eh? 
I think that's a fucking perfect way to end. Yeah, yeah, Frank, cool. thank you so much, dude. Mate, I really appreciate pleasure. it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cool, man. Oh. Perfect. Smashed it. How long was Smashed that? Smashed it. 55. Oh.